James Davis. Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, Helen. I'm interested in your thoughts about how the medical profession can help uh, bring about the change that's needed. Uh, there have been concerns raised over the over medicalization of treatment for those with uh, learning disabilities and autism. Um, and I, I wonder whether you feel there's a, a need for more training and support in inpatient units in particular, so that clinicians can help to push the change, uh, accepting fully that, you know, community services and housing are often the limiting factor currently. But if there's change from within the system, it's often very helpful. I mean, broadly, yes. So on the one hand, the Oliver McGowan uh, mandatory training uh, will be required of, of everyone working across the NHS, um, uh, no, doctors, nurses, healthcare assistants and others. Um, and then secondly, looking at the training for those who are coming into healthcare professions. So we are working um, uh, with Royal College of Medical Schools, again, on the appropriate training for doctors and their undergraduates, uh, medical undergraduates to um, because qualify uh, with those skills already. Very good. And in terms of the inpatient units privately run, um, there is often concern that some of those making assessments, some of the clinicians, doctors making assessments, have a vested interest in, in not discharging patients or in welcoming patients uh, under their care. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, I mean, it's a clear, pretty serious accusation of a clinician that you know, we look to clinicians to make the right clinical judgments for people and they should only admit somebody to an inpatient unit if that is genuinely the right place for them to be and will be of therapeutic benefit for them uh, and similarly um, they should be working to support the discharge of uh, individuals who would be better off um, being cared for outside an inpatient setting so now I would look to our clinicians to um, maintain those kind of standards that we would uh, inspect of them but I would also say that we need to make sure that there are the community alternatives so that clinicians can be confident that when somebody is discharged, there will be other uh, care for them um, and that there is effective commissioner oversight of the settings where people are being cared for. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, as a clinician myself, I, I would like to fully agree with what you're, you're saying and hope that that's the case. But it has been put to us that independent review of some of those under under care might not be a, a, a bad move. And I wonder perhaps whether Dr. Roger Banks would, would have anything to add on that also. I'll, I'll bring in Dr. Banks in a moment, but I, I just want to, if I could, James, just go back to Helen Whateley. The issue I think that people are concerned about is a conflict of interest because the doctor may be working for the independent sector com company that's getting thousands of pounds from an inpatient bed being filled. And so the suggestion is that any decision to keep someone in an inpatient unit over a prolonged period of time should be made by an independent panel, not by a doctor working for the organisation that's uh, financially benefiting from that care. Um, so I think one of the there was a valuable piece of work led by Baroness Hollands, the independent case review for those who have been in uh, you know, longer term um, uh, segregated settings, for instance, been very helpful at looking at individuals. Um, and you know, her recommendations include um, what should be done to, to make sure that those individuals are supported to be discharged, including putting in place somebody with a, a specialist uh, skill to support that individual discharge on no literally on a on a case by case basis as you say thank you james did you have any more questions uh well well only really if uh, dr banks had anything to to add on that topic if, okay if let's let's bring in dr banks on that one and then i'll go back to claire murdoch and dr banks because we've got some other ones for them as well so um dr banks do you want to come in on that point um, uh, thank you very much um I think um, I, in thinking about uh, clinicians and decision making, you can't separate the clinician out from the culture and the environment in which they work. So whether or not a doctor is making um, decisions about uh, retaining someone in the hospital on the basis of financial uh, incentives, I think is more part of uh, working in a culture where there is 
uh, less incentive to be able to move people on because of the financial gain. I think we have, as the Minister has uh, alluded to in terms of Baroness Holland's uh, oversight, we do have a system in place of care, education and treatment reviews, which should happen not only uh, prior to admission, but once people have been admitted uh, and at regular intervals to bring a degree of oversight and challenge from um, a more independent panel, which would always include a clinician who is not connected with uh, the particular facility. Uh, strengthening care education and treatment reviews, both in terms of um, frequency, but perhaps bringing a greater degree of independent scrutiny, I think uh, certainly would be a valuable way forward. Thank you. Thank you, James.